Hello and welcome to another random review and how-to. Today we are once again working in the sump pump. This is a different sump pump. If you've seen any of my videos on my channel, uh, you know I have two sump pumps. And this seems to be the little bit, uh, at least further away from where the water comes out. This one doesn't have as much water rushing in. But what is happening is I think my sump pump float uh, switch is busted because it's not cycling um, fully. So... After it drips for a little bit here, it cycles. It just cycles out a little bit of water. And uh, normally this thing will actually be pumping water out uh, constantly. So when the sump, the float gets just a little bit high, and I think it might even be like um, an inch. You can hear it there. That's exactly what it's doing. Um, so I think that I want to go ahead and swap out that vertical float switch. Uh, I went ahead and picked up this Everbright vertical float switch. Um, this includes a bracket and clamp for clamping up to a two inch pipe, uh, the piggyback plug, and it's ideal for use in small diameter pits. So a couple of things you're going to want to keep in mind about this particular one is that uh, it's actually made for if you don't have a ton of room. So if you don't have a lot of room inside your crock there, this is exactly what you're going to want. Uh, but you want to make sure when you do put this in that you're leaving the level at the bottom at least one inch above the discharge of the pump. So uh, just when I go ahead and put this in, I want to make sure I get it there with enough space. Now, this does not come assembled, and that is something I don't remember because I replaced this once in my other uh, crock. So what it comes with here is the actual uh, top of the switch here, and then this piece here just slides right in there. Uh, so you put that in, and then there's this little peg that goes in, and then this little piece goes on the bottom here. But not until I go ahead and put on my float. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this all together. Uh, for those of you that have never worked inside of a crock of a sump pump before, I can tell you a few things. First of all, where I live, we got a ton of clay. So there's a lot of clay buildup that came into this. I'm actually going to scoop that out after I'm done with all of this, uh, just to clean this up a little bit. But what happens is, and you're going to notice I have two uh, pumps in there. One is actually hooked up to my battery backup here. So should we lose power, uh, this one kicks into gear and it'll cycle and uh, pump water out in case we lose power, which we rarely do in this area, which is really good where I'm at, uh, at least in my neighborhood. And so a lot of these wires that are in here are for the hookup of that. But the other thing um, that I have here is just my standard pump. So that pump comes out and you can see that this is how this works. So if you've never done this before, the switch that we just bought goes in between your sump pump hook and your cord uh, that you plug into. And so when uh, the float rises up and it gets to the top, it will turn on and, and actually cycle in. It switches this on and that connects it and then it cycles out your pump. So, and it cycles out your water. So that is how a sump pump really works. So if you're having issues, before you go and maybe replace uh, your sump pump altogether, you check that switch because I've had these switches go bad before. And so that's always the first thing I kind of look at just judging by this one. Uh, and it also could honestly just be, there's a ton of gunk on top of it. That's weighing it down, but either way, I just want to switch it out there. Uh, these things are about between 35 and 40 bucks. Uh, this ever built one was I think 39 at home Depot. I'm going to have a link down below to Amazon. If you purchase it from there, it helps me, which also helps you. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just assemble this. And then come back and show you me and show me disconnecting everything here. Wanted to show real quick that I got this part here assembled. And so the way that this works is now I got my grommet there at the bottom. And so this float sits in the water. And as the water level rises, it catches up here. And you'll hear it click. And that switches it on. And then as this goes back down, it eventually grabs the bottom and clicks it back out. So that's the basic function of how this goes. So this piece went in, there's a little pin right there that goes into it. And that's how this works. And then what you, I did here is I just need you know, one flathead to unscrew that and open that up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble inside. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And then we're going to reattach the other one. So inside here, here's my other connection. Uh, so that's what I got to loosen up. But first, what I want to do is make sure I unplug everything. So, some pups unplugged. My switch is now unplugged. Whew, that was in there tight. And then I'm going to go ahead and just get my flathead in there. Start to loosen this guy up. 
And by the way, this is not a clean job. So when you're in here doing this, you notice right away how dirty everything's gonna get. Uh, there's some of that sludge coming in. It's very much just sediment, so I'm gonna pull that out. So I loosened this just so I could work with it a little more. I pull that up. I'm gonna go ahead and unloosen. We're just loosen. Unloosening would be tightening it. The reason you're going to want, like I said, I'm going to clean these pipes afterwards is because you want water to flee, flow freely through that. Because if should any of these pipes, and they all should be on a downward trajectory to this crock, it's empty into it. But if they're not, I start to level it out. Now I got water just kind of sitting in there and it'll find its way out. But I'd rather just have no resistance whatsoever. And if you uh, don't like spiders, like I don't, I hate spiders, then uh, do this in the winter. And I'm doing it right at the end of winter. So there's that. This piece is off. I'm gonna pull that out and show you there. So you can see there is some buildup on there. And that could have a lot to do with it not rising up. It's stuck. But I could fill a lot in there too. So it's probably full. I could just take it apart and clean it, but I'll do that after the fact and then have this as a backup should I need it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this and do so. I got to go around all this wiring. Just make sure you, you kind of pull everything out that you're not using. So pull that out, set it aside, and make sure all my wires are out of the way. I'll go ahead and fortunately grab that, set that aside. Quite a bit in there. Same on this side. I'm really gonna have to go in and clean that. Very clay area we live in. There's a lot of clay. So I just want to show you comparatively the lengths on these two are much different. Um, you can see mine that I'm taking out is a lot longer, but I'm just gonna put this one lower uh, because I wanted to just cycle the water out. I don't need to have it be as high up as this one was. Um, there's really no reason one way or the other. So I'm going to go ahead and start this one up here. I'm actually going to flip the orientation around. See how I had that going that way. I want it to be easier to work with, so just flipping it around in there. There we go. Go ahead and start that. Now, we really start to tighten it here. Get it as close to being tight as I can. And then the other thing I'm going to do is just, based on where that one was located, on the left of this pipe, I'm going to put this float right kind of in the middle of the crock so that the water's not hitting it when it drips down. Because if there is all this sludge and everything else kind of moving through, I don't want it landing on it. So I want it to kind of be oriented away from that. So I'm going to get this pretty close to being all the way tight and then I can just shimmy it down the pipe. So there I go. Remember, I'm going to want to keep it an inch above where the um, where the bottom of the sump is. So make sure I do that. Did I go too tight? I think I did. I'll loosen it just a little bit. There we go. So there I am, it's the bottom of it right now is actually 
in the water. So it looks pretty good to me. Pull these wires up. Again, I have it offset over here now, so the water's not directly hitting it. And I'm making sure it's not hitting anything else. And you want to make sure that that float can go up and down freely without being hit by anything. I'm going to go ahead and just tighten this in because that float, surprisingly enough, will pull this whole thing up. Sorry for breathing right into the camera and being out of breath. But I leaned over I'm in a short, tight spot here. Getting nice and tight. One more half. There we go. So we're now tight. The last step for me is to go clean my hands. But I'm going to go ahead and make sure I put the plug. Plug this back in. And I'm putting it once again in between my sump pump cord and the power that we have coming out. So I'm making sure I'm right in between those. Also making sure I'm plugging in the right thing. So I'm plugging my sump in now. And then, easy enough just to test it. Obviously I could sit here and wait to see if this fills up, but I could also just grab the bottom here. And there we go. And that's what we're looking for. So that is full replacement here of a sump pump float. Like I said, if you want to purchase the one I got here, you go ahead online. Down below, there's a link to Amazon. That is an affiliate link, which means I get a very tiny commission if you purchase it from there. If you like this video, there's a lot more where this came from on our channel. Check it out. You can subscribe by hitting that subscribe button. I want to thank you for watching another random review and how-to. We'll see you next time.